Um, well, why don't we, it's 3.04 and, uh, and uh, I did want to wait a couple minutes to let the folks come over that were on that other link. Uh, and, and I think, but in the interest of time, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started. And, and you know, we usually, usually start with a word of prayer. Um, does somebody, does somebody feel called this, uh, this afternoon to lead us in a prayer? I can. Who was that? Oh, Pastor Ray. Oh, Pastor Ray, yes, please. That'd be great. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these teammates gathered together. Lord, we ask that you would bless we do be with our residents and all our facilities. And let us do your work here in these places. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And thank you all, all for being on today. We've got a good crowd, um, some lots of individuals and some that are all in offices together. So uh, thanks for all of you. Um, if you would, if you're not on mute, if you'd go ahead and put yourselves on mute, unless you're talking, that way we'll probably have a little bit better um, uh, people be able to hear a little bit better and I'm just going to run you know we just hadn't done this in a while um somebody has stolen my screen um who are, oh there they are you know we always have these fun times when we all get together but uh, that's just the way it is when we're all doing this in our spare time um just a couple of quick things, and, and, and again, I just wanted to do this because we hadn't been together in a while, and, uh, and, and we probably ought to do it more often, but I don't want to get in your way because you've all got so much work to do, but I think it is helpful that we at least touch base and try to see each other's face as best we can every once in a blue moon. Uh, just a couple of quick things. Um, one, just a, a quick COVID update. You know, now that most of our um, teammates are vaccinated and almost all of our residents and clients are vaccinated, and that's true certainly, you know, around the country for the most part, <clears throat> you know, we're seeing better results. You know, we're seeing less hospitalizations. Um, but right now, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of people getting COVID. Uh, I've, I've, no, I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, can Martha Ammons, can you mute yourself, please? Um, but, but, you know, it's still out there. You know, somebody said I was in a meeting today and they said it was the post-COVID era. And a number of us disagreed and said it ain't post-COVID yet. We're, you know, our, especially our healthcare facilities are still right in the middle of it uh, and still under a, a, a state and a national emergency. So it's not like it's over yet. Uh, so we're just having to do the best we can. The good news is that hospitalizations are way down. Um, and you know, the more people that are vaccinated, uh, the better um, uh, and, and boosted. And you know, we're probably looking, I, I keep hearing that we're probably looking at an annual booster, um, you know, kind of like the flu. Um, you know, some people say, well, you know, when can we quit having these booster shots, well, that's probably not going to happen. It, it looks like it's very much going to be a, an, an annual thing, probably very much like the, um, you know, like the flu. And so that's just the way it's going to be. So I think we need to get, um, get right with that, uh, with that future. Uh, but I, I would continue to encourage people to, uh, to, uh, to be fully vaccinated and boosted um, that's the only way we're going to get really get past this. And I still think it's probably smart. I'm not doing it like I should either, but I think it's probably smart to wear masks when you're in, uh, you know, when, when you're in large groups, because that's where people are picking up COVID. And as I said, we seem to be going through another spell where a lot of people are getting COVID. The good news is they're not getting terribly bad sick, but the problem for all of us is that that means we might not be able to be to do our jobs and be at work and take care of our residents and and uh, and clients. So I, I would just encourage people to continue to be careful and to to be fully vaccinated and boosted 
uh, if at all possible. Uh, the two things I really wanted to talk about today, um, and and I'm I'm really stealing. If you if you look in my in the 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 new Voices magazine that will be coming out very very soon, um, I, I'm I'm really going to tell you what I wrote about in there, and that's really about culture and advocacy. Those are kind of my two big issues right now, and the two things that I hope that we can all um, you know kind of focus on. Um, uh, in addition to all the other things that you do, you know, trying to take care of our residents and, and clients every day. Um, but from a culture standpoint, you know, I, I really do think the LSC way uh, helped us to survive. Uh, I got to sit in last week for most of the LSC way training. You know, we had a, a, a train the trainer um, uh, uh, time up at uh, Clemens. Uh, and and had people from all over the organization there to get retrained, and they'll be coming back to you, to everybody, uh, with another round of, of LSC way training. And I asked, um, Jill Nothstein, are you on here somewhere? I am. Oh, there she is. There's Jay Nothstein. <laughs> uh, and, and I think Manny was going to uh, maybe uh, help you with this too, but just wanted to to get a little update on the LSC way training from you and or Manny. Sure. Well, I'll just start out and say that, like you said, we had a really good training session last week. I think everybody was excited and, um, you know, the LSC way has been around for a few years, but, it, but it, it's a culture. It's not meant to be like a, a program that, you know, we just think about every once in a while. We're really trying to make that our culture, um, it aligns our mission, our vision, and our values, and it's just a way of, of doing things, of, of how we treat everyone we come into contact with, the, the people we serve and the people we work with. So um, Manny uh, works at the Trinity Living Center, and he was um, one of our, um, I guess we'd say students <laughs> last week. And I don't know if he's on here or not, but he said he would say a few words. Uh, Manny, are you on? Is Beth Huber on? Aaron, um, do you see anybody? <laughs> do you see them? Um, I think they may have forgotten about us. <laughs> okay. Well, um, then, Ted, do you want me to say any more, or is that enough for now? <laughs> you know, I think that's enough. If uh, if they get on, we'll um, if you'll clue me, we'll we'll. Uh, We'll uh, give them a minute if we have a minute before we get done. But sure. I, I, I do think it, it really has that LSC way, you know, finding the best, the way that our best employees, our best teammates do their job and then teach the rest of us how to do it that same way. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and that we all try really hard to, to live our vision, mission, and values every day is what has, has, uh, has helped us to survive this pandemic. Uh, and this, the worst labor crisis in our modern history. And, uh, and uh, Jill, I appreciate you leading that effort and the committee uh, that you worked with uh, and the training you put on. And I'm looking forward to that, getting out all over the organization again uh, and, and really spending more time on our, on our culture because I, I think we just need to continue to, to, to push that culture. It's really what we've got it's our secret weapon and and i even got one too and i hope you all get one of these um it's my it's my latest you are the uh you are the key and uh, i got that for attending the training and uh, and and then i uh, of course i immediately forgot about it and threw it on my desk and i and i about every morning i find it uh and and i get to smile all over again so thanks for all the good work and for reminding me that even I can be the key some days to uh, to uh, to what we're doing. The uh, the other piece that I wanted to spend a little bit of time on is advocacy. And you know, I, I really never thought I was going to have to spend so much of my time uh, doing advocacy type work, but I, I I'm spending a, a bigger and bigger part of my time on advocacy, and that mainly is around telling our story. 
uh, to legislators and regulators and governors and and uh, whoever else will listen and that can help us to to uh, to continue to be funded uh, and to and can support us to do our work. Uh, and and so I, I, again, that's become about a halftime job for me. Uh, and and it's become more and more of a job for you all between the associations that we're members of um, and, and different groups that we're members of. And we'll probably be calling on you more going forward to, to, um, to share your story with our legislators and regulators uh, because we, we need to have a louder voice. And that's what this is all about. The, the main thing is, is just funding. You know, we're real proud of the people that we serve, whether those be foster children, uh, folks with developmental disabilities, nursing home residents, uh, assisted living residents, uh, and, and all of that is government funded uh, and, and therefore government underfunded. Um, and I know, you know, nobody wants to pay more taxes and but but that's where that money comes from is tax money and so unfortunately uh we are underfunded in most of our programming uh and that makes it really hard to care for our residents and clients the way we want to care for them uh we don't want to just give them the very basics we want to give them that cherry on top that abundant life that we that we talk about in our vision statement we want to make that a reality, but it takes money to do that, to pay salaries, to, to buy resources uh, for the people that we serve. So we're spending a lot of time talking about Medicare and Medicaid and state funding. Um, uh, and one of the biggest things is to, to be able to raise those, uh, especially the, the wages of people that work directly with our clients uh, and, uh, and, and our residents but also the support staff that supports those people. Uh, and, and, you know, for a long time, we had been talking about, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a $15 an hour, um, uh, you know, that, that really it ought to be a $15 an hour minimum wage. Uh, I don't even think that's enough anymore. Um, we've gotten, we've gotten uh, a good bit of funding um, but some of our funding is getting ready to go away. You know, I talk, I mentioned the national, um, you know, the, the national and the state emergencies uh, declarations. Those are getting ready to go away over the next few months. And some of the regulators and legislators would like to go back to the funding that we had two years ago. But, you know, obviously, if we did that after wages have climbed like they have, uh, that we wouldn't be able to survive that way. So we're spending a lot of time explaining to these legislators that we've got to have that money to continue paying the wages uh, that we have risen to so that we can continue to do the work that we do. Uh, we've had some success at that. Um, we've gotten additional funding from Medicare, Medicaid, and a lot of our state programs. We'll continue to push that loud. Um, uh, we, in North Carolina, we, we we have not been able to pull that off in South Carolina, but in North Carolina, uh, we were pushing for that $15 an hour uh, uh, minimum wage for direct care workers and that the state would pay for it. We did not, we did not get that to the finish line. Uh, they did give a, a, a bonus to direct care workers that had been employed um, through most of the pandemic. Um, but, you know, that caused as many hard feelings as it, as it, as it caused good feelings for those that got it, because if you didn't work there the whole time, you didn't get it. If you changed jobs, you didn't get it. Uh, and of all things, they decided that nurses weren't um, weren't direct caregivers, which is one of the crazier things I've heard come out of state government. But I'm proud for the people that did get it. And those were the uh, nursing assistants, housekeepers, dietary staff, uh, line staff in the facilities, um, uh, all of our um, uh, um, direct care workers in our group homes uh, on the child and family side, so that on, on, on in North Carolina, uh, and we did get some of that kind of money for uh, um, um, in some of our programs in North in uh, South Carolina also. 
So we will continue to advocate, but I probably am going to be calling on all of you to, to help tell your story. As a matter of fact, just recently, you may have seen a, a, a big article, if you haven't, uh, feel free to go look at it. I don't know if you want to, but the Charlotte Observer did a big kind of expose on nursing homes. Uh, it was primarily aimed at nursing homes. We actually invited them to come to one of our facilities to, um, to really learn what it's really like. And, uh, and, and our Trinity Oaks Health and Rehab in Salisbury, uh, because that was the closest to the reporter, um, he came and spent about the whole day with us. The problem is he did not use anything that we gave him. We let him talk to a, a nurse and a nursing assistant and follow them around for, for a couple of hours. Um, we let him talk to a couple of residents and a couple of family members. Uh, and none of that stuff was used in the article, which was very frustrating, but it, it wasn't his narrative. That's not what he wanted to tell. That's not the story he wanted to tell. Um, and, um, and, and I did write him back and say, you know, I, I was really disappointed because he, he really didn't show what it's like the LSC way. He showed what it was like, um, you know, in, in some other places, but certainly not in all places and certainly places. not in all places. places. Uh, oh, there she, people, people are figuring this out. Even when they do it wrong, they figure out what they've done and get us, uh, uh, muted pretty quick. The last thing I wanted to talk about, it's not just about salaries and we've seen those salaries. We've done uh, all the money that has come in for, um, for like Medicare and Medicaid to offset. We've used that for our, for our staff. Um, uh, but we also need to be looking at, uh, at benefits. And so we're doing some things different and you're already seeing this come out and you'll see it over the next couple of weeks and months. Matter of fact, I've got a meeting right after this one to talk about a couple of other things, but I just wanted to, to mention a couple of benefit issues. And you know, some benefits affect one group of employees more than it affects another, but we try to balance it out so that everybody, and, and we're also looking at how to attract new people to come to work for us. Uh, and sometimes their benefits um, you know, we have to, we, we want to offer things that will be of interest to them. And to that point, one of the first things that we're doing, uh, it's not going to help me to been here 32 years, but, um, but we're, we're lowering the waiting period to get benefits uh, from 90 days to 30 days. So um, instead of having to wait 90 days to start accruing PTO, for instance, uh, um, uh, or to sign up for health insurance, that'll happen at the 30 day mark. So uh, that will affect some people that are already employed that might be in that 60 or 90 day period. Uh, but that's a big change that we hope is going to attract more staff to come to work for us. Cause as, as you will all agree, we, we need more help uh, and, uh, and you need help doing your job uh, and and the best way to do that is with uh, is with some um, some better benefits also. So that 30 day wait will be a big difference. Another thing that we're doing on our health insurance uh, is and and, and I, I'm trying to learn how to say this and get it right, but we are going to on our health insurance um, we are going to offer a free a a premium free employee only option. So um, if you're if it, if it's just employee only coverage, um, your 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 every two week uh, cost of that could be if you choose that plan. This is just going to be one of the three plans that we provide. Is is going to be a free option. Now that's obviously a high deductible uh, uh, plan, but for people that are just looking for that catastrophic coverage that are looking to come to work for Lutheran Services, um, uh, uh, that, that to be able to get a free, a premium free um, uh, employee only health coverage should be helpful. So that's gonna help also. We're also moving our full-time um, hours worked down to 30. So if you work 30 or more hours a week, then, then you can qualify for full-time benefits. Uh, and then um, we're moving part-time, and this is a big change too, 
uh, we're moving part-time down to 20 hours, uh, uh, so 20 to 29 hours a week. And this will all be coming out at you in a couple of, through Paycom and through a lot of other things. So I, I'm just announcing this uh, because it's good news and I wanted to share some good news with you. Um, but um, so if, you, if you're working 20 or more hours a week, you're eligible for uh, benefits, including health insurance. So that's a that's a big change. Um, a lot of people were working, uh, you know, every other weekend, and, uh, and and we're only getting about 20 hours in, um, and, and we're not eligible for insurance. This way, they will be eligible for insurance if they want it. And then, lastly, along those lines, uh, uh, is our PTO cash out, uh, and that's something that a lot of organizations do not do. And Lutheran Services has been doing that at least once a year, and for the last few years, we've done it twice a year, uh, is, uh, is we'll let people, if you have a, a certain amount, if you keep a certain amount in the bank, you can cash out your uh, um, um, some of your PTO money. And, and as I said, a lot of organizations do not allow that. So that's a nice benefit, and it's a nice way to reward longer-term employees who've piled up a lot of PTO in the bank. Uh, it's a way to put a little bit more money back in your pocket. So you can see some of these things are for brand new employees. Some of these things um, uh, support more of our long-term uh, staff. The deadline is May 17th um, to get that uh, PTO cash out form in this time. So please don't miss that deadline if you're interested. And then there's uh, there are some other benefits that we're looking at um, uh, uh, providing. Uh, we, we're looking at that all the time. Uh, you know, unfortunately for us, it's a matter of what can we afford. You know, we we as an organization and we as teammates have decided to work in a in in a business that's not rolling in money that that relies on the government for funding. Now, it's wonderful ministry, uh, but it doesn't pay well uh, uh, for the for the organization or or necessarily for us. Um, but again, that's not why it, that's not the only reason that we're all here. Uh, but we will continue to do the very best we can to, um, you know, from a, a salary and wage level and a, a, a benefits uh, level uh, for, for all of you. And then lastly, in my last couple minutes, I just wanted to say thank you, you know, for all that you continue to do for Lutheran Services um, and, and really not just us, uh, but um, uh, not just the organization, but, but our residents. Uh, that's what it's all about. Um, I, I'm trying to scroll through. I don't think I see anything um, on the um, uh, on, on the uh, chat feature, uh, other than I see Sybil has mentioned. Uh, uh, thank God for the vaccine that she tested positive last week. And Sybil, I assume from the way you said that that you have not had any uh, any bad symptoms. Uh, I pray that is the case, uh, and uh, and glad that that vaccine is protecting you uh, like it's supposed to. Uh, without anything else in the chat feature, uh, it, I, I'll wait just a second if anybody wants to throw anything in there. Uh, but thanks for your about 25. Well, since I was late, about 25 minutes this afternoon. Uh, and uh, and uh, and I hope we can do this again every once in a while, just to just so we can continue to see and be a, uh, and be with each other. Um, anything else for today? Um, hey, this is Sybil, and I just wanted to say, like the um, I don't know who's not getting vaccinated, but I hope that folks would because it is not like if what I'm experiencing, people are experiencing worse, is just horrible. Oh. That's yeah, it's not so good, but I, I've had that and I've had the booster as well. So right. I'm still masking it up. I was masking it up, so I have no clue how it happened. So it's just, yep. it is real and it's still out there. So just yep. telling folks to be safe. Well, I've, I've talked to both of our, our state's bishops, Lutheran bishops in the last week. And Bishop Smith here in North Carolina told me that, that they've got about 10 pastors that have COVID right now. And that the most they ever had at the what we would have considered the height of the pandemic, I thought we were past that. We're not. Was five at, at any given time out of a, probably a couple hundred pastors. So all of a sudden he's got ten 
uh, pastors who he's, you know, the minister for basically uh, that uh, that he's having to to uh, to work with. So I know it's out there still, and just be careful and uh, and stay healthy so that you can continue to to take care of our our residents and clients. With that, y'all have a good rest of the day, and we'll be talking soon. Thank you. Thanks for all.